my name is Elisha Hart. I'm a metal art instructor and a mixed media explorer. And today's video, I'm going to show you how to use mylar stencils in metal embossing. There's some great companies out there that make beautiful stencils. And for today, we're going to use the Stencil Girl products, specifically a border range that was designed by my friend, Lori Micah, which works very well in metal embossing. We're going to use color-coded aluminum from 10 Second Studio and also some pewter sheet and I'll show you at the end of this video how these stenciled uh, metal pieces can be used in different projects. So pull up a chair and let's get stenciling. Okay, so we're looking at what we need to do stenciling on metal and we need a smooth hard surface I often use a paper pad, which is just five sheets of recycled paper or uh, eight by 11 copy paper, whatever you have handy. We need for tools, a rubber roller or brayer, a paper stump. And if you have one that's sort of a medium size and you can get your hands on one that's slightly thinner, that's also very handy. A Teflon tip tool. The, this is the Teflon tip tool that comes in the basic kit of 10 Second Studio. You need tape, just regular painter's tape, something to attach the stencil to the metal. Pencil is handy. A little sanding block that we use on the color-coated aluminum. For metals, again, we're using the color-coated aluminum, which is black on this side, uh, on one side, and shiny on the other side and then we'll also use some pewter sheet today and of course we do need a stencil so for the projects that i'm demonstrating today we're going to use the stencil girl products uh, border range designed by Lori micah and in particular this is the one pilgrimage to mexico so let's start cooking Okay, so we're going to start by using our stencil on top of the metal. And usually that is what we do when we want it to be embossed. So in this case, the front of the metal is the black aluminum. Um, and I'm going to attach my stencil. You can probably see sort of, I'll sort of center it and then try and find a way to attach the stencil. Uh, obviously it's a little bit harder when you do it on the front. So I'm going to find my happy place with it, turn it around, and then just attach my painter's tape to the back so that this thing doesn't move. I'm working on my paper pad. I'm on the front of the pewter, uh, sorry, the front, front of the color-coated aluminum, and I'm going to use it just like you would normally use a stencil. So I'm going to outline my design. And the reason I'm using a pencil, and I can certainly use the Teflon tip tool, is just because of the, the graphite in the stencil actually allows it to smooth along uh, easily over the metal, and we're basically just transferring the outline. So I'm using the stencil uh, edges and just transferring what I see. Okay, so when I turn it around, I can see where the actual stencil is. Turning it around, I'm placing it on the hard, smooth surface. And now we're going to start rubbing into it. The, the first thing we can do is we can actually roll over it with the, the brayer. And that also just helps to stretch the metal right into the this template on the front. So. In some stencils, when it has big, wide open spaces, using the roller actually helps a lot to stretch the metal in there. So I'm using my little paper stump. And just where the outline was for the stencil, I'm using the very thin little paper stump. And make sure that you're on the hard surface when you're doing this. And just rubbing on the inside of that design. And even though the stencil is pretty thin, it does stretch the metal to the front and gives you that stencil look. So we'll just work through this little design here.
Okay, and if you really want to crisp up your stencil, you're going to use your Teflon tip tool and get into all the little nooks and crannies there and again outline the design. And because the stencil is underneath, you can feel where the, the design is and where the edge of it uh, begins. And when we do this outlining, it gives you a really beautiful, crisp look on the front as well. And especially with metal um, color-coated aluminum, you want your design to be nice and crisp so that when you sand it, it will really give you some clean lines in terms of highs and lows. Okay, so pretty much that's what it is. And when I turn it around, you might have some difficulty in actually seeing how this had transferred. But I always tape on only one side of the stencil so that I can lift it and see if it did transfer very well. So this is a little hard for you to see, but I'll remove the stencil and I'm going to sand the aluminum and then you'll get a really nice look on how the stencil transferred onto the metal. And there you go. The next way that I'm going to show you how to use the same design and the color-coded aluminum is to actually place the stencil underneath the metal at this time. So this was the front where we placed the st stencil before on the front and now we're going to place the stencil on the back of the aluminum and get a negative uh, on this design as opposed to the positive that we got here. So your metal is face up and we're going to put it on our hard surface and give it a little rub. And this is a little harder for you to see uh, where this is going, but once we've got the design transferred, uh, you'll get a better idea of where we are. So um, I'm going to use my paper stump and just rub over the design as well so I can see exactly where it is. And again, I'm sure that you're probably not seeing much of what is going on there due to the metal being black. So I'll get a quick little move on here. This, again, you make sure that you're on the hard surface. I'm using my paper stump to rub on the inside of those the design. And when I'm doing this, I'm pressing the metal right into the design there. And want to make sure that I get some clean lines on the, uh, the edges there, again, so that I get some really effective uh, sanding. And there we go. So make sure that you're on the hard surface, that you're not stretching the metal. Um, you want that rig the rigid surface underneath so that it stops the metal from stretching too far. You just want to get a nice, clean, crisp stencil design on the front. And when I turn it around, you can see how the design had transferred, in this case, we're now referring to this to the back and this is the front. So now I can sand with my, um, can remove it from my stencil and use my sanding block. And this time you can see the same design and in a negative um, format. So when you compare the two, you get a positive and a negative transferring it, the design with the same stencil. So I'll show you a little border that I did with the same. And again, here you can see it really nicely. So this is when you've placed your stencil on the front of the metal 
and embossed from the back and this is when you've placed your stencil on the back of the metal and used it as a negative and pushed in to the front so that your stencil is recessed as opposed to raised which is on this side. The other way that we can use obviously these border stencils is that we can incorporate them together so that they make uh, squares or um, elongated pieces for bookmarks and things like that. But again, I just wanted to recap what we did with the color-coded aluminum and this time we'll do it on the pewter so you can get a look, um, just an idea of where we're going with this again. So when you're looking at your pewter sheet, we want to mark the back with a B with our Sharpie. And bring out that stencil again and then we'll just attach it again to the front of the metal. So in this case I want to use the same stencil and then have it in the four squares together so that it's nice and uh, symmetrical. And the way to find your center piece on your, your pewter would be to use um, some kind of an edge and just on the back of the pewter just line across so corner to corner line across and then again from the back corner to corner line across and then obviously where the two points meet that will be your center so when I push down on that and I turn my pewter around I know where my center on this is so using the same uh, pilgrimage to Mexico stencil. I can see that that is my little center block there and again I'm placing my stencil on top of the pewter and attaching it with some tape and I go, I'm going to do these two blocks down and I need to just secure it like this on the front. There's not a lot of space to attach it. Turn it around and then just attach it from the back as well so that you can work with the, the stencil. So I'll just attach it and that it you don't want it to move while you're working with it. So this is the back. Again the stencil is attached to the front. I'm going to use my um, I can outline this with my pencil or what I can also do if it's a very intricate design and I'm a little lazy to transfer all of that design can turn my pewter around onto my hard surface and use my brayer and just run it over the stencil so that it starts transferring some of the design. I have to admit that I actually prefer the technique where I would put it on my paper pad and just outline the design so that I can see when I turn it to the back exactly where I'm supposed to rub. Depending on the openness of the stencil, when you usually roll from the back on the hard surface, it does push things into the grooves, but this is another extra little step. And again, when you have your um, put the patina on when you create this, when you outline the stencil like this and you create another extra line as a groove for the patina to sit into. So um, just transferring it like this so that when I turn it around onto the hard surface I can see exactly where I need to rub. So I'm going to turn it around, see if I got it all. I'll just do the one block uh, so that you're not there watching paint dry. Okay, so I'm on the back of my metal. I've got my stencil underneath, I have my hard surface underneath and I'm going to use my paper stump just to rub on the inside of the design and you can see how nicely and crisply it already transfers onto the metal and it's embossing to the front. I 
Okay, and then once I've rubbed with my paper stump and I'm satisfied that I've picked up um, a lot of the stencil design, I can again from the back this time use my Teflon tip tool and get into all the nooks and crannies there and make sure that I transfer this beautiful design onto the pewter. Okay, so I'll show you what the completed stencil looks like. And we are, here we have that same design that we just did with um, this uh, specific little part of the stencil. And then what I did to, you can, once your design is onto the metal, you can now use your um, other ways of adding interest to the design. You can use your ball tool. Um, and I'll just do a quick little demo here. So from the back, you would use your ball tool and just push down. Give it a little swizzle. And I'm on my thin foam mat for the ball tool. Turn it around, put it on the hard surface, use the cup part of the tool and push down. So you had your stencil as the start off base and now you can add your own design to it and just work with that beautiful base and then just tweak it a little bit more so that you make it your own. I'll just do one more of these, turn it around, put it on the hard surface, use the cup part of the ball tool and push down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you a few other projects that I've made with stencils and how I use the stencils even in a more different way on some of the projects. So just know that there's a whole world out there of stenciling that you can use on your metal projects and that the more you experiment with it, the better um, idea you'll get of how versatile the stencils are. Okay, so in this particular project, um, we used this wonderful stencil from mimic.co.za and we used the stencil starting off on the front. So this was placed on the front of the pewter and we embossed it and uh, just like I showed you. And then for the second part of this, we used the stencil again in the negative. So the stencil was put placed um, on the back of this, the, the metal, and we pushed down, so we got a negative on that part there. And then on the sides of this uh, particular box, we used the stencil, and this time we used it as a mask. So I had placed the stencil uh, on the pewter, on the front of the pewter like that. We did an outline with our Teflon tip tool, just using the stencil as an outline. And then I used a texture wheel to roll um, in the, the um, open parts. And as I was doing that, I transferred um, some really nice design to it. So in this case, we used the stencil right on top. We outlined first so that we had a nice um, reach. And then we used our texture wheel uh, just to rub over the, the stencil, and I'll, I'll just do a quick demo of that. So we basically just used our texture wheel and rubbed over the stencil in uh, the open bits, and then you transferred that lovely design. And I'll just show you on the other side as well. So lots of different ways that you can use your stencils um, on the front of the metal, on the back of the metal, and then just using it as a mask and using it to transfer texture as well. Okay, so for this particular project, we used a wonderful stencil from mimic.co.za. And in this case, I placed the stencil on the back of the pewter and we used the stencil areas 
um, we rubbed over the, the recesses and the stencil areas ended up being the embossed part on the metal. And then after that, we had cut out the recessed areas and did an inlay from the back with some color-coated copper. So that is another way of using your stencil. Again, in this case, like I said, we placed the stencil on the back of the metal and then the recessed areas that was created was then cut out with a needle tool cutter. For this particular project, we used the Crafters Workshop uh, Balzer Design stencil, uh, which has some nice geometric um, uh, elements in it, and in fact, it created a beautiful mandala. And the way that we use this particular stencil, again, is just placed it on, on the front of the metal. Um, we turned it around, put it on the hard surface, and then took the time to roll and then um, push into the stencil grooves where we could see the, the design was and ended up using some beautiful pewter and patina and then enhancing our dotted design with the ball tool like I showed you on the previous sample there. So again, this is uh, Crafters Workshop, Balzer Designs, beautiful stencil and here is another one in that particular range. Um, that looks like that and this was the original stencil just placed on the top and embossed from the back. When you do eventually decide when you're working with these stencils and you're finished working with it and you want to enhance it a little bit more by pushing certain areas out, um, in this case we pushed out the center part, we filled it with a filler and then did our patina on the front of the pewter. Okay, so this is another little stencil from mimic.co.za and we made these two little projects using the same stencil and then just applying it in different ways. So certain components of the stencil, um, if you can see that we used uh, to create the little hands, we went and used the triangles there and created a border with that. And if you look on the side, you'll see that we used the little geckos and um, created the edging on that as well. And in this particular one, we use the starburst, uh, sorry, the sunburst as the main focus, uh, placing the stencil on the front and um, embossing from the back on a hard surface. And this is uh, sort of what, what outcome you get. And again, the little uh, gecko on the side. And this particular box was done on slate gray color-coated aluminum. And this one was done on the black uh, 10 seconds studio uh, rockstar color coated aluminum. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful and that you have discovered some new ways to use your stencils in metal embossing and that you will create some wonderful projects. <laughs>